Welcome back to the show. Steve Tasker, Chris Trapasso here. We're, we are pleased now to be joined by NFL Films executive producer Greg Cosell. Greg Cosell's appearance on the show is presented by Scott Lawn Yard, an official commercial site work partner of the Buffalo Bills. Greg, thanks for coming on once again. It's good to see you. There has been no joy in Mudville this week. No. With the Bills hanging 18 points on the, on the uh, Bengals. But, um, you know, the Bengals are on a heater. And they're a handful for anybody to handle right now. The Bills took them to the six, to you know, to a six-point loss, and turned it over minus two on the turnover rates uh, sh- charts as well, and um, actually turned out probably a little better than maybe the Bills deserved. Yeah, no, uh, I mean clearly, you know, it, it always it's always interesting when you're not playing well overall. It's funny how all of a sudden teams games seem to get away from the way you want them to start. You know, obviously the Bengals score on their first two possessions and you're trying to get into some kind of rhythm and flow and feel good about yourself because you know you're not playing great. And all of a sudden you look up and it's, what, 14 nothing. And, you know, when, when games are like that, Steve, you've been through this, I'm sure. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you go through a whole week of practice. You're, you're feeling good about your your plan and your approach. And then all of a sudden the game starts and you're down 14 nothing, And it's just, you know, no no matter what people say, even if it's early in the game, still first quarter, it, it, it just changes the whole feel of the game. Am I right? It's not the same. Yeah, that's right. And um, as you get – as this game took off, I mean, it really got hard for them to get off to any kind of a good start when, you know, they went down uh, and – the second series, Josh comes out on the first play and throws the interception. All of a sudden, you're off the field again. You don't get, you don't see yeah. the football again after your first drive until eight and a half minutes or eight less than nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Yeah. So you've really squandered the entire first half. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, you know, it's. I mean, I, as you know, offensively, this team was really while they they've been good on defense the last number of years. Clearly. Um, And the numbers suggest that I always felt like over the last three, four years, they were really an offensive team, you know, that they they could put up 30. I don't want to say with no problem. I'm not one of those people that believes in the NFL. Anything happens, you know, easily or at will, as some people talk. But this was a team you felt almost every week could put up 30, could put up more that uh, and they made big plays in the pass game. And clearly that's one thing certainly over the last five weeks, where I don't think they've scored more than 25 points in any of these games the last five weeks, you just have not really seen big explosive plays in the pass game. Now, that's down big time in the league overall, explosives in the pass game, but the Bills were so based on that, I thought anyway, just, and then you guys know I watch every snap, I you know, I've seen every snap for years and years and years, you know, that's something you always sort of took for granted, that there would be big plays in the passing game, and that's not really happening right now. Greg, in watching the Bills this season, there was so much talk before the regular season started about 12 personnel. Obviously, Dawson Knox's injury kind of puts that on the shelf for a little bit. And early in the season, uh, Knox wasn't really contributing in a big way. Kincaid, the rookie tight end, was making some plays. As Knox has gone out and the Bills' offense hasn't really been humming at that normal efficiency. Uh, They've been in a lot more 11 personnel with Kincaid as the only tight end on the field. Moving forward, and maybe after next week when Knox should be back from injury, in what you've seen, what, what do you think the Bills are like? How are they at their best? Is it in 12 personnel? Is it in 11? Is it up tempo? Is it huddling to give Josh Allen more time to kind of diagnose before the snap? What have you seen on film that seems to be the best course of action for this Bills offense philosophically and personnel wise moving forward. Boy, Chris, you just threw a lot out there. I feel like I have to write a paper in a college course now. <laughs> and it's there, there was now. a lot there that, that could be <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess what I mean is what do you think what do you think is it eleven personnel or twelve personnel well, that the Bills I think should it lean goes on more? Beyond a personnel issue. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, I think that you can be successful both ways i mean clearly both knox and kincaid are athletic enough where they can detach from the formation so Mm -hmm. you can be multiple with your formation looks out of 12 if you choose to be if that's the way you want to play um much of that comes down i think to how uh, an opponent's defense how you feel they're going to play you or as you start and go through your first or second series are they going to play you in base or are they going to play you in, in nickel that's something you have to see if you go with 12 because both receivers and certainly Kincaid are athletic players. Um, 
11 personnel is a little different. I mean, if, if we're trying to, you know, I, we were joking around, you know, I was trying to say that, hey, I, I want to be nice. But, you know, I think that if you really are being honest, and I, like I said, I've watched the Bills. Once you get beyond Stephon Diggs, who's a very, very good receiver, but not a true vertical dimension, mm-hmm. um, they don't really have a vertical dimension in the pass game. And at some point, what that means is you've got to scheme and design route concepts that attack the field at all three levels. Um, okay. Again, I, I I think you don't see a lot of that on tape. You you know, and that's something I think they need to do. I feel like I'm, when I watch the Bills now that their offense is condensed. And you know, I'm not in the meetings. It's I'm not. It's no knock on anybody in the building. I'm not there. I'm just telling you what the film shows. It's a condensed looking offense. And when you say that, you know, no question, when you're throwing the ball to the, you know, the, the rookie tight end Kincaid as much as they are, and it's been interesting because in the last couple of games, Josh, it, Josh is really efficient. I mean, he's leading the league yeah. in completion percentages, but you're right. The only big plays they've gotten, the ones that think jump off the page, are the ones where Steph Diggs breaks a tackle, goes the distance, you know, uh, in the Miami game where he does it for 55 yards. This last week against – uh, Cincinnati when he right, spins on the first out of a series tackle. where he caught and went for 34 or whatever right, it was. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of what they've been um, reliant on for big plays. And that is unusual for this offense. But, and obviously, since we're talking about it, it's probably not worth the trade off. Do you go with a 70% completion percentage or do you go with the occasional big play? Which one's more important? Well, I mean, there's obviously a balance and a trade off. But right. what I will say is this if, if your offense is going to be let, let's use the word efficient. If you're going to throw a lot of short passes, okay, and 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 then then I think you're saying that hey, for us to score a touchdown, we're going to need more plays. So I think if you need more plays, then you need more balance, okay. And by balance, I don't mean you have to have five runs and five passes, but I think the run game would need to become more of a factor if you're going to take the approach that hey. We're going to throw the ball short. We're not really going to attack at the at the deeper levels. Then I think your offense needs the run game to be more of a factor. And I know early in the year they really worked on that and they had some success, but they've in some ways settled into that mode of the last couple of years where the run game has not been exactly what they want it to be. And then it becomes hard uh, because you eventually get to second and nine or third and nine and even though they're very good on third, see, that's that's kind of the weird thing. They've been, you know, they're still really good on third down. I think they're tied with the Eagles, uh, number one atop the league at 50%. Um, right. But they're just not, you know, they're not scoring points. And, and I, that's not a profound statement. That's just the, what the numbers tell you. But they're not scoring points. And there's certainly, you're not seeing by, by design. I'm talking about by design. You're not really seeing explosives in the pass game. Staying on the topic of balance, what I've noticed in watching the film is not a lot of screen game in this Bills offense. And to me, that's always been a very easy way for, again, I don't want to say like anything's easy in the NFL, but a way that teams can have that extension of their run game. Do you think that suddenly, I mean, it's not like the Bills are going to all of a sudden throw 10 screens a game, but do you think that's important to kind of incorporate that? It's kind of felt like, when they haven't been able to run it well, and Josh Allen later in games is getting under pressure because those pass rushers can tee off, do you think it is important for even a team that is trying to hit those explosive plays to have a screen game element with James Cook and then maybe Leonard Fournette, who they just signed? I mean, obviously, you know, the more that you can show a defense, Chris, the better. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say – I wouldn't answer your question by saying no. Um, you know, I will say this, too, and and – and, you know, I, I love Josh Allen. I mean, I, he is I, – I think he's the most talented quarterback in the league. You know, people can debate the best. That That's for another time. But I think also – and I don't know whether he feels it or, you know, uh, or it's just in his DNA, but there are times that he's not as patient as he needs to be in the pocket to allow some, some route concepts and combinations to develop. And I think, you know, he's got to really work hard to do that um, – you know, we saw a play where he hit Shakir, I think, for 23 yards down the, the right sideline. I think that was on the first or second possession. You know, and he ran out of the pocket. He still made the throw, but there was no reason for him to run out of the pocket. There was no pressure on him. 
And, you know, I think that he has to, at times, depending on what the route concepts are, I think he has to sit there and and let it happen. Um, Now, that's easy for me to say with a clicker, you know, where I'm not going to get hit by anybody, uh, you know. But, you know, I think sometimes, obviously, the intermediate and downfield throws do take a little longer to develop. and, And, you know, you have to feel comfortable with your pass protection. So you get this um, this spot where Josh needs to be a little more patient, and you mentioned the run game and needs to be more effective. If the run game, I was looking at the stats for the for the Denver Broncos defense coming into this week. They run two high safety or split safeties about forty five percent of the time. Yeah. They run it less than the Bills do. Do the Bills see more of that than other teams do with the split high safeties? Or is it kind of a league-wide thing where they're going to run, they're going to keep a lid on the offense with two safeties until you prove they can't do that and you run the ball? Is that kind of the, yeah, the atmosphere? That's league-wide, Steve. I mean, right. that's what I'm asking. are really down in the league. Keep yeah. uh, Look, you know this. If you play with two high safeties, what are you taking away? You're taking away yeah. seams. I mean, yeah. if you play with single high, the seams are there. Okay, unless you're going to carry guys, and then it becomes a whole different form of zone. But, you know, what teams are doing more than ever is they're starting in a quarters structure, and then they're sort of kind of ro- rotating, disguising. But And and what happens if the quarterback, because you don't have a lot of time, you take the snap, and if you're unclear as to exactly what you see, what a lot of quarterbacks are starting to do is check the ball down, which is another reason why there's not as many explosives. But the, but the fact is, split safety has become a much bigger deal throughout the entire league. The numbers reflect that, um, and, and actually teams can do a lot more uh, with a quarter structure to start. They can get to anything from a quarter structure. And so it makes it a little tougher for quarterbacks and the pass game. I mean, I'm watching the Chiefs, and it's the same deal. They're not getting explosive plays either in the pass game. I have a question about two of the Bills receivers. You mentioned one of them, Khalil Shakir. Over the last couple weeks, we've started to see him out on the field a little bit more, uh, had those two 20-plus yard plays against the Bengals. Do you think he is, I don't know, just good enough, has the skill set to be that possession slot receiver underneath, and then – Another receiver, Deontay Hardy. He's small. He's five foot six. Do you think that he has the skill set to play on the outside? He only had three snaps against the Bengals, and I thought personally he should be on the field more because he does have what you mentioned, the ability to stretch defenses vertically. They tried the one deep ball, didn't get there. It just yeah, feels and, like and a woozy ran with him stride for stride, Chris. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So, um, but I would r- say that in response to the first part yeah. of your question. I love Shakir. I loved him coming out of Boise. I thought that at Boise, he played inside and outside. I thought he could be a quality receiver in this league. Now, having said that, you know, he's not he's not a special talent. I mean, you're not talking about a guy that's going to be the dominant receiver in your pass game, but I think that he's absolutely qualified to be a number three for sure and line up anywhere because teams do more with formations now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think if you had – I think – I think it depends on the rest of your receiving core. I mean, like I said, they just don't really have a vertical guy. But I really like Shakir. I I really liked him coming out. So, you know, I'm glad to see him playing more because I think he's the kind of guy that can, you know, get open in in zone areas. He catches the ball. He's got run after catch to him. You know, I'd like to see that continue. Hardy, on the other hand, is, is gimmick's not the right word, but he's a specialty player. Okay. Um, You're not. That's what I wanted to ask. You okay. can't play him a lot of snaps. I mean, they tried the deep ball with him. Um, obviously, a woozy ran with him stride for stride. I remember him in New Orleans a few years back. It was the year Jameis Winston got hurt after eight games, and mm-hmm. he caught two or three really long touchdowns where he ran by the defense. That's worth taking a shot. Um, you know, and then you might use him in other ways like jet sweeps, things like that, where you believe you're taking advantage of his speed. But he's not a 40, 50 snap a game player. Okay. How good can Dalton Kincaid be? I mean, obviously he's gotten an expanded role with Knox being yep. injured, uh, and he's caught over you know twenty balls over the last three weeks. So they he's getting a ton of targets, and he catches everything. Um, what do you see? Yeah, I, I really like Kincaid. Uh, he was another guy I loved coming out. Um, you know, now to me the next step with him because he does have this ability is to you know sort of expand 
um, the route concepts, get him a little more on, on intermediate routes. He certainly has the speed to to run the seam and w- run wheel routes, you know, things of that nature, which we've seen a little of. You know, I think you want to keep working in that area. But he's also a really good safety valve, the kind of guy, you know, in an ideal world, he's the kind of guy that when it's third and seven, you throw it to him and you get nine and you get a first down. You know, he's that guy as well. I think he can be a complete receiving tight end. He's He's got all those traits. Um, so you'd like to think that his role will continue to expand as well um, as you go forward, because he certainly can do it. Um, but they just need, you know, it's funny. Sometimes when you watch a team uh, on either side of the ball, you know, and I've seen this because I, I, you know, this is what I do. I, I pretty much watch every team. And sometimes you just see them get in a little bit of a rut. And I can't quite figure out exactly all the reasons. You know, you can talk about them. You know, obviously, I'm not there in the meetings. But they just it just feels to me watching their offense like it's just in a little bit of a rut, like they're trying to figure out how to get out of it. And they show flashes once in a while, but it's just not quite happening the way they want it to happen. Yeah. One last uh, question for me, and I'll, I'll make it straightforward. Uh, Gabe Davis, is it the yeah. lack of production? Is it he's running too many clearing routes where he's just like not really in the progression technically? Is he having problems uh, creating separation? What have you seen individually last couple games? The Bills just have not gotten number two type production out of their big play wide receiver. Yeah, and, and you know, I would answer that, Chris, with the, by saying that he's been there for a number of years now and essentially – and 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 – all I can say is is ultimately what the results are, okay? I don't know how it's all put together, but the results indicate that he's – you don't know what you're going to get from Gabe Davis within the context of the passing game week to week. That mm-hmm. is not a knock on Gabe Davis as a, you know, as a player, but he's – the way it plays out on a weekly basis, it doesn't play out as if he's a – a quality number two that you can count on every week. Now, maybe he is. And maybe it's not him, but that's not the way it plays out. And they okay. need it to play out that way. Right. Give us your synopsis uh, at first glance and maybe, you know, from this side of the game uh, for this Monday night game between Buffalo and Denver. Denver coming in. Um, yeah. They're coming in uh, off their bye week. Are they off their bye off week. Off their bye two week. straight wins. Um, they beat the Chiefs the week prior. That's Playing right. Really they, good defense. Really right. good defense. Got five turnovers off the Chiefs. Chiefs yeah. held the Chiefs to nine points, which is unprecedented. And I and as as rough as it's been here in Buffalo Bills country after the Cincinnati loss, I could only imagine what Chiefs fans were talking about in Kansas City after scoring nine points on the Broncos defense that gave up seventy to the Dolphins. So what you know, what are your thoughts about this Denver team coming into Buffalo in its in its current moment? Yeah, they got all. They have a lot of young, explosive edge rushers. Um, they've got, you know, they got uh, Browning from Ohio State, who's in, who's now become a a full time edge player. They've got Benito from Oklahoma, who's an explosive athlete. They've got Cooper from Ohio State. Um, they're these are three guys who are really good off the edge. They're explosive athletes. Um, they've got two linebackers in Jewel and Singleton, who are just savvy kinds of players. Um, and you know they're they're a quick, fast defense. They've got a great corner. It'll be interesting to see if it's a true matchup because uh, Patrick Sertan may be the best pure corner in the league. So it'll be interesting to see if they match him up on Diggs. Obviously, they move Diggs around a lot, so he's not going to be matched up to him on every single snap. Um, but if he lines up outside Diggs, uh, that'll be a matchup that would be fun to watch. But they're kind of a young defense with um, a lot of juice to them. And uh, they're not an easy defense to play against. What about offensively? That Russell Wilson, we talked about it earlier in the show, his sack rate is at 10% again after he led the league with 55 sacks last season, had the most sacks in football. That game, beating the Chiefs, super impressive. You mentioned everything defensively, the five turnovers. What, has the offense been any better the last couple weeks, or have they really been riding the defense, beating the Packers and the Chiefs? Yeah, it's more the defense, Chris. I mean, they're trying to run the ball with Javante Williams, who's a real strong runner. You need to get bodies to him because he can run through people. Um, Wilson's been up and down this year. Uh, you know, he's he's obviously made some throws. His, see, here's a classic case where his numbers look really good. But if you watch the tape, it, it, that's not what he looks like on film. But the numbers are good. Um, 
and certainly he can be good. You know, he's he's had success in this league. Um, you, you you have to get people around him. You have to make him break down. He'll break down quick. He's not the same athlete he was, you know, five, six years ago. Um, so, you know, you need to do that. I mean, it's really important in this game to get people around him real quick because, you know, he tends to break down. He's smaller, so there are certain things he just can't see. Um, but they're going to try to run the football. I mean, they're, they're, that's kind of what they do best at this point. And Javante Williams is, is, a, is a tough guy to deal with. He's a strong, physical, powerful runner. Greg, thanks so much. Greg Cosell, NFL Films, a senior producer. Thanks for spending time with us, man. We'll see you again next week. It's always a treat. Thanks, Greg. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.